After 1,300 miles of occasionally wild sailing in the Mozambique Channel, we have reached our destination. Not just a new country, but a whole new continent. This is South Africa, with wild landscapes that left us in awe. wildlife that were a little more wild than we bargained for. We are Matt and Amy. We left England in 2016 on a mission to sail around the world. Just the two of us on our 37 foot sailboat Florence. Five years on we have sailed over 35,000 miles across three oceans, exploring new countries and cultures along the way. We've arrived into South Africa. This is a hugely momentous milestone in our journey around the world and we're really excited to be here. We're safely secured in the Zululand Yacht Club. Over the next month or so, we're gonna be sailing down the wild coast to Cape Town. The weather on this coast is notoriously difficult and we could have to wait a long time to get a weather window to be able to safely sail down to Cape Town. But that is not a problem because that just means we've got more time to explore the amazing natural environment of South Africa and that means safari. We are heading north from Richards Bay to St Lucia where we will be picked up for a day with a guide in the Shishlui Infolozi game reserve. It's five o'clock in the morning and we're just waiting for the 4x4 and our guide to pick us up from our accommodation. It's about an hour from here uh, to the reserve and we're both really looking forward to it. This is the first time we've ever done anything like this. Try not to get my hopes up too much about seeing a lion but there's all of the big five in this reserve so it could well happen. You have to sign your life away in case the lion eats you. I'm signing your life away too. Oh, thanks. closest we've got to any elephants and these two are sleeping you can see how this one's leaning against the tree his eyes are closed and he's he's moved occasionally to give himself a bit more support because his head's so heavy amazing did you think we get this close to elephants i hoped i hoped we'd get this close to elephants but i didn't really think that we would being this close to these magnificent animals is something we have not experienced before Coming on safari and seeing these animals in their natural environment is one of those bucket list items for us that we talked about doing one day but never really believed would actually happen. Later on in the day we came across many more elephants. They were clearly used to the safari trucks and were sniffing at us with their trunks. 
It almost felt as if they were curious to take a look at us too. Elephants were not the only big game that we saw. The Shishlui Infilosi Game Reserve is home to a successful breeding program for the southern white rhino. This is where the species recovered from a population of just 100 individuals to over 19,500. A little known fact is that every southern white rhino population in the world is descended from rhinos within this reserve. What we did not film was the groups of heavily armed rangers which are sadly required patrolling the reserve to protect these magnificent animals from poachers. <laughs> Oh, oh. The cheeky monkey. A bad spot for lunch. It's not just the monkeys that want us to join us for lunch today. Everybody wants to get involved. Hello. Oh, you're gorgeous. At times today, I've just found myself grinning and even giggling to myself in the back of the vehicle as we're just going around on safari in South Africa. It's something which I kind of never really thought I'd find myself doing. It's something you dream about but never really believe is actually going to happen. And yeah, I keep having to pinch myself to believe we're actually here and doing this now. Yeah, I feel the same to be honest. It just feels surreal to be here. I can't quite believe that we've sailed to Africa and it's only when I see something as iconic as a zebra that it just, <laughs> it hits me and yeah, I'm, it's not quite sunk in yet that we're here. It's amazing. It's really windy here today, which is one of the reasons we are out exploring game parks instead of trying to sail on down the coast. Uh, we've got to wait for a weather window and we're just trying to make the most of that time to explore inland in South Africa. It's actually really nice to be off the boat and not worried about her when it's as windy as this. Uh, we've got our friends on some research keeping an eye on her and we've used pretty much every line and every cleat that was available on the dock so she's really well tied up in a marina that is already already secure and well protected so hopefully she'll still be there and in one piece when we get back. The weather is such that there's no way that we'd be sailing on down the coast this week and next week although the wind turns around and blows from the northeast which is a great direction to blow us along the coast uh, it's forecast to be 30 knots gusting 50 with massive waves so we might be here for a little bit longer which is no bad thing yeah that's quite okay <laughs> After a South African braai for lunch, there was yet more to see in the park. Taking a trip in the back of a safari truck is a luxury for us, at £130 for both of us for the day. But we thought it was wise to learn from the professional ranger before we attempt to do safari the low-cost way in our own little hire car. Let's just say that things didn't go as smoothly when we were on our own. Just as we were coming out of the gate we saw a lion hiding in the bushes. It was quite a long way away but that's four of the big five that we've seen today. Only the leopard that we haven't seen. Pretty good going. Really good day. Yeah, really good day. The town of St Lucia where we are staying is on the coast in an area of wetlands. After a quick sand blasting on the beach to confirm that it is definitely still too windy to sail on, we headed up the river into the swampy area behind the sand dunes in search of South Africa's most dangerous animal. No, it's not these, but these pretty male weaver birds trying to attract a mate to their perfectly round woven nests were worth a quick stop. Getting into nature and seeing all of the different wildlife 
is one of the highlights of our round the world trip. The animals that we are really searching for are estimated to be responsible for around 3,000 human deaths per year in Africa. This is definitely not a trip to be making in our little dinghy, which is why we are on a guided tour with this pontoon boat. Our first family of hippo. These huge animals spend all of their day wallowing in the shallow river. And I was amazed to find out that they can't actually swim, but instead push themselves along the bottom of the river. The guide warned us that they are extremely territorial animals. These huge yawns are to show us and the other hippos just how big their teeth are, and to warn us that we shouldn't get any closer. This is definitely not an animal that you want to get in the way of. And it's not just the front end that's to be avoided. This big male was keen to mark his territory and tried to splatter us with his dung. It was hard to get a feel for the real size and power of these animals, with most of them covered by water. We were told that if we want to see the whole of them, we would have to wait for nightfall, when they stop sleeping and leave the river looking for food. The best place to find them? Hanging around downtown. Apparently, the grass verges and lawns of St Lucia are irresistible to a hungry hippo. This would be one of the many times this trip we wished we had hired a bigger car. massive. I'm actually a bit scared. It's alright, it's getting on the pavement, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> we are surrounded by hippo. <laughs> that is quite cool. That's so We've got an entire apartment to ourselves, it's so long since we had this much space. But this was like the second cheapest place to stay in St Lucia, it's only £29 a night. Um, but it's luxury. This is actually the first time we stayed ashore off of Florence in nearly two years. And we haven't realized how that would affect us. And things that to people who don't live on a small boat would seem insignificant, but just coming here and having so much space, it's a one bedroom, small apartment. And just having this space above my head. Whereas on Florence, uh, I can't stand up. If I go to the galley, I can't actually fully stand up at 6'1". And if I go forward into the head, I can't fully stand up, I'm kind of like this. And the ease of living here is just, oh, it's, it's made a real impression on us and we realise how different our life is living on a small boat most of the time. I mean, a big comfy sofa and Netflix on the TV feels especially weird. I, I'd really forgotten how much easier it is living in a house. So I think we'll take advantage of the big screen and Netflix, stay in and watch a film because we've got to be up at four o'clock in the morning to go on safari tomorrow. So this is our super stealth safari truck. We're trying to camouflage it. Yeah, you can't see, what you can't see in front of me is a car and you can't see it because it's so well camouflaged that the animals won't see it at all. No more guided trips for us. Today we're heading out on a budget self-drive safari up the west side of St Lucia Estuary in the Isamangaliso Wetland Park. Right. Time to see if our little red safari truck can make it around the game park.
there's a whole herd of Cape buffalo in the road and they're actually one of the most feared African animals. They're, um, they're supposed to be really aggressive. We're like a red rag to a bull in our little car, so we don't really want to go any closer. Definitely not the right colour car for going <laughs> looking at bulls. <laughs> there's the bull. Oh look, a little red car. What should I do about that? As you're probably aware, like many animals, it's believed that Cape buffalo can't actually see colour. A recent study, however, suggests that elephants can. And their least favourite colour? Bright Kia car red. We stopped the car because we could see some elephants in the distance and they were having a drink in the water hole. Sure. And now, now they're coming straight towards us, hoping that they're just going to pass behind us. Yeah, it was awesome. They're massive, <laughs> massive, much bigger than this little car. But yeah, that's uh, that's worth coming into the park today for and just driving around all morning just for that, to be honest. So we just had a herd of elephants and now there's a herd of giraffe going past. That is crazy. They're beautiful. Look how graceful they are. Worth getting out of bed at four o'clock in the morning for? Yes, it's always worth getting out of bed at four o'clock in the morning. You just never think it's worth it at four o'clock in the morning. This is what you have to do when you don't have an expert guide with you. They're not in parlour. I know they're not in parlour. I think they're Ny Nyala. Nyala or something like that. There it is, a Nyla, N-Y-A-L-A. -A. And the bloke's got like yellow Hello. socks on. Driving on a one-way single track loop, we came across another little red car, just like ours, that an elephant seemed to have taken a dislike to. After making them reverse 300 metres, she seemed satisfied and moved off the road to let us through. Or so we thought. It would have been wise to remember the saying about an elephant's memory at this point. This would not be the last that we saw of her. Smell it. Smell it. Oh, oh. you're not happy with that, are you? Where there are elephants, there is elephant dung. And where there is elephant dung, there are dung beetles. There are a few places that you can get out of the car in the wetlands and have a walk around, like this boardwalk. There's loads of hippo in the lake over there. We haven't seen any big wildlife other than the hippos whilst we've been out of the car. But, and it's just really nice to be able to get out and hear the nature and just have a bit more time to kind of relax and, and enjoy it. We're just driving past this creek and I've spotted our first Nile crocodile. We've seen the saltwater crocodiles but never a Nile one. I think this is just a small one. Because they can get to like four metres. But the Nile crocodiles are the only ones that can live in brackish water, yeah, so yeah. salt and fresh. As we came round a blind corner, we were suddenly confronted with an elephant in the uh, road. Uh, um, uh oh, yeah, reverse, reverse. 
So we were going this way, but... Uh, it's the same elephant because she's got a tag and she's not in a very good mood today. <laughs> I'm just a bit further down the road and we are reversing. <laughs> Different road, about an hour later. Same elephant. <laughs> same elephant. <laughs> trying to get a steady shot, it's hard. Just throwing dust around. We knew we had to back away slowly, but at the time we did not realise quite how much danger we were in or we would not have found this so funny. We got off on the wrong foot somehow. Standing in the road. We're not allowed off the road. You're allowed off the road. <laughs> uh oh, there's another car the other way. Hello. Elephant reversing. Elephant reversing. Wow, look at the size of her. That's a car over there. Just for scale. Just for scale. <laughs> That's a fairly big car. That's a 4x4 four four over there. We just thought she was letting us pass, and she turned round and ran at us. <laughs> she is not happy. We are reversing. There have been incidents where people didn't back away from an angry elephant and have had their car overturned and crushed by the elephant. Even though they seem like relaxed, placid animals, elephants trample and kill around 500 people a year in Africa. This is something that we looked up after the incident. To put that into perspective though, the elephant is still the one in real danger. It's thought that illegal poaching by humans is responsible for around 30,000 African elephant deaths per year. I think the coast is clear. This girl's like creeping forwards. <laughs> sneaking up on us. She's sneaking up on us. <laughs> I think we're in, we're in forwards this time. <laughs> oh, we're past her. We can accelerate away. <laughs> we're going, we're going. There she goes. We just realised we've actually been in the park for nine hours. It absolutely flew by the time though, and an absolute bargain. We saw loads of stuff, and it only cost us nine pounds for us and the car to get into the park for the day. Yeah, and I think we saw as much probably as we would have done if we were on a guided tour, because a lot of it is just down to luck. But I'm really glad that we've been able to experience it both ways. I'm, I'm not really sure that I have a favourite. I loved the amount of information and the, the things that we learnt yesterday. But today we've, oh, we've just got close to so many things and, and been able to see so much. It's, it's worth doing it both ways. Yeah, it was a different day today because it was just us going and exploring uh, without an expert guide. So it's a little bit more exciting, for example, when that elephant, we came around the corner and there was just an elephant in the road. So yeah, you can do South African safari on a budget. Yeah, it's, it's just amazing to see so many animals. I just didn't think we'd see this many just on our own. We looked at the weather forecast and decided that we're actually going to head back to the boat a little bit earlier than planned because the wind has been crazy over the last few days and is forecast to get worse Even today. Even more crazy. And there's been some damage in the docks uh, with one of the guys who's looking after our boat for us, one of the docks just up from Florence has actually been damaged by the strong winds and it's supposed to be even mm -hmm. worse tonight. So that's the, that's the difficulty with having a boat. You've always kind of tied to it. If we were just traveling without the boat, it'd be easy. But uh, no, we need to go back and check on Florence. Florence was absolutely fine, but we felt much better being on board to look after her, 
just in case something bad happened. Even though it was difficult to sleep with the wind screaming through the rigging and the docks creaking and groaning. Next time, we just have time to hike to the tallest waterfall in the world before a weather window allows us to set off sailing down the wild coast where we break Florence's speed record on our way towards Cape Town. Don't forget to subscribe to catch the next episode. We release a video every two weeks. If you'd like to find out more about behind the scenes on Florence, track our progress across the oceans in real time, find out where we are right now or ask us pretty much anything, then please head over to our Patreon site and join the crew. We'd like to thank everyone who supports us to make these videos possible. And a special thank you to our staff patrons. Oh, look, it's pouring. They're, they're going to fight. Oh, no, he's rolling. Just lying down.